Hello, Brewers. Be rad, grain to glass. It's Friday. Welcome to 2023, motherfuckers. Today, we're gonna be getting fucked up with something super cool. Okay, there's this new product from Kegland. This is the eight liter PET kegs with ball lock connections. One of the coolest things about this is they're designed to fit in a normal fridge. So like, I live in an apartment. I don't want space for a full keg fridge, right? Well, you can take these. The other cool thing that this can do that no other keg can do that I know of is you can lay it on its side because it has this, you can see it in this other one here, this fancy floating dip tube in there. So still picking up, still picking up, probably still picking up like this. We'll try it, we'll try it. So anyway, first thing we'll do is we'll put this string together. So you get this nice little pack, all comes with the keg, everything you need, so we'll open it up. I already did this once before, so it's pretty darn easy. First thing we're gonna do, got our nice little hose, okay. We put it into the dip tube screen, boom, like so. Then we'll put that down for a sec. We're gonna put this onto our ball lock connector like so. Come on, get on there now. Then put that into here, screw that on. You know, I probably could have done that before, after I might want to wait till after to put this on actually. Put that on. Well, you know what, let's put them all on. How's that sound? So we've got our PRV pressure relief valve. Screw that sucker in. We're going to need that to purge our pressure and also to leave it open while we transfer. Otherwise it's just going to get all up in there. We got this guy. That's our gas in for when we're dispensing. So now we take the little rubber, put it on the red one. Ugh, it's kind of a kind of a pain in the butt to get on there. Okay, this is the, the most pain in the butt part of this whole thing so far. So far, so brad. All right, and that's gonna keep going because that's just my style. I just go in, I don't do any research. What's research for? All right, all right. Okay, I got it. <laughs> so look at that, now we got that. Looks like that in there. Now we take this, shove it in there, like a gentleman. Boom, now we are ready, okay? So we put this in here. Down she goes, screw that on. It also does have a solid cap, so like if you wanna take it to a friend's place and you're just gonna get fucked up and drink this whole eight liter, you can just pour it like a growler. I mean, fuck yeah, that sounds fun, right? So I got this other one already. It's already star sand. It's already ready to rock and roll. And then we've got our uh, OC IPA kit from grain to glass that we brewed another the other day. It's gonna be hazy because I stirred it up, moving it. <laughs> Whoops. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some CO2 in there. I got 10 PSI here. This thing is rated for 58 PSI. Don't test it unless you want uh, a lot of beer everywhere. <laughs> so okay, so now it's nice and hard, right? So we let that go, purge it, then we'll do it again because that was just getting all the oxygen out, etc. Perfect. Now we take our, put that on, this is great for gas. So that goes on to the inside of our keg. And then we got this fancy little jumper here. So we're gonna pull the PRV and we're gonna twist it and we're gonna lock it so that it stays open. So that while we're filling, it's pushing the pressure up. All right, so we hook this up. First side to the keg. Second side to here, you got the PRV pulled. I got this set at about five PSI. So it'll transfer nice and slowly. And there we go. Much more reasonable flow rate now. And so it's gonna take a minute, but uh, good things come to those who wait. I hate waiting. I want a drink. Oh, perfect time for a sip of Skulls Light, am I right? 
So now, yes, it's going slowly, but it's filling up very nicely. Just a little bit of foam. You're always going to get a little bit of foam unless you've got conditions are perfect. Then old Kevin here is going to be able to get some homebrew on tap at his house. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. You can't drink here. I mean, you can't drink here. You can't work here unless you drink at least X number of IPAs per week. It's kind of like the law or something. Now look at that clarity. Started off pretty haze bomb, but look at that, baby. Okay, I'm getting impatient, so I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. We're at about... 8 PSI here, go a little bit faster, crank her up, now we're at 8 PSI, this gauge kind of sucks. Right. So you can actually hear a little bit of the pressure being released through our pressure relief valve. Okay, so we took a quick break there and, oh, come on guys, is this, okay, so Kev is only going to get 6 liters because that was all that was left in this keg. See that? That's all sedimenty. I mean, it worked. Worked real good. We're going to turn our pressure relief valve back, put our CO2 back on, just to pressurize it up to our 12 PSI. Turn that up a little bit. Okay. And then once that gets nice and hard, hard, it's ready to go. Uh, you don't have to do this transfer thingy thing either. You could just use these as normal kegs. Put your uncarbonated wort in here and carb it up. It's all the same. All the same as a pin lock or ball lock keg, other than the fact that these are ball lock connections, not pin lock connections. As far as I know, Kegland doesn't make pin lock connections like this. So, unfortunate for all you pin lock folks. I honestly think I might start doing like 24 liter batches and just making three of these. Because I mean, yeah, this is awesome. They got a little handle, they're nice and light. You could probably strap like a few to your chest like so. Like Rambo with kegs. That would be amazing. And there you have it. All you need is enough beer to fucking fill it, my bad. Um, and you're fucking golden, bud. Time to get fucked up. <laughs>